right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, going to go to an email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy. He's going to share his story about his absolute nightmare of a marriage to his ex-wife. And he's going to go into all the details of how he met her, how he obviously rushed into marriage, didn't pay attention to the red flags, didn't even know what red flags to look for, etc., etc. And the nightmare was to be married to her. And you're going to see real quick that she is definitely a narcissist. And I'm doing this one, guys, just to, as a warning to show you potentially what you could be dealing with if you, in fact, choose to get married one day and you don't properly vet the girl you're going to marry. Okay, you know my feelings about the issue, the subject of marriage now here in 2022 in the 2020s in the modern age, so I don't need to go over that again. But if you're going to do it, you really need to spend years, and I do mean years, with your girl, really seeing what she's like, seeing what life events that do happen, and how she reacts, how she responds to those situations, how she is with money, how she is with spending, how she is with resolving issues and problems, communication, that type of thing, all sorts of things. So then you can have an idea what it's going to be like to marry to her, and also get to know her family, see the dynamic there. That's very important. And also, guys, how important it is to know what red flags to look out for, and to pay attention and respond to them properly. Because so many guys don't, and they end up miserable. And I want to see that happen to you. However, guys, this will end on a happier note. I'm not going to say happy, but happier note. Because you're going to see here, eventually, when they split part ways, the female judge doesn't buy into any of her BS. So this guy will walk away better than most guys do, but he goes through a lot of hell. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I'm going to jump into it, and you guys are going to see exactly what I'm talking about here. Starts off, he says, uh, Dear SSM, I have a rather long story that I feel really that will really help educate our young brothers to avoid marriage, and I will summarize it as best as possible. My father met a tall Russian girl who was attending a bachelorette party at a Greek restaurant. My family is Greek, so that is where they often go. My father, being the flirt that he is, went up to the table of ten Russian girls and asked who was single. One girl raised her hand and showed her a picture, and he showed her a picture of me. I was against this, but the next day she texted me, so whatever. I was bored anyway. Dude, are you having? Do you have a hard time getting girls that your dad has to go pick up girls for you? I'm gonna assume no, but uh, he just probably saw. Your dad probably just wanted an excuse to go talk to a big table bunch of hot chicks, and he figured, all right, I'll use my son as an excuse. That's probably what was going on there. <clears throat> Uh, not going into the whole dating process, but after two months, there were many red flags I did not pick up on. But watching your channel and other channels like you after my divorce, I could not believe how accurate and spot on they were. See, looking back, because hindsight is twenty twenty. he saw there were all these red flags that she was displaying, but he just simply didn't know. He know what to look out for. So this is a perfect example of why I do what I do, why I read these stories that you guys send me to show you guys and give you real life examples. And that way for you relationship guys, if you experience any of these things, you see any of these red flags, you're going to be like, aha, I remember that video that SSM did three months ago. Aha, I'm going to pay attention to this. That can help you out. So I appreciate this guy sharing his story as many of you guys will share your stories and put yourself up there on the chopping block to be a little embarrassed by your past actions because you help guys out. So thank you. Anyhow, it says, fast forward the day before my wedding. I told my best man's mother that I was only getting married to get divorced. What was the worst that could happen? Boy, was I wrong. Dude, if that was your attitude going into your, your wedding, like pretty much, hey, you know, if I get divorced, I get divorced, why the hell are you marrying her? Was it family pressure? Was it societal pressure? Was it religion? Was it that, or the age old, well, this is what you're supposed to do because, hey, that's what society and religion tells us we're supposed to do. That's what they say in TV and movies we're supposed to do. So, oh, well, you're, that's a major gamble, my friend. He says here, we fought all the time, and a year and a half after our marriage, we had a really bad fight. So, so much for the honeymoon period. You're already off to the races and fighting and carrying on like that. I'm going to guess that was part of your whole red flag things before you married her. All the fighting, all the turmoil, the drama. Guys, if you're fighting all the time with your girl, why in the hell are you going to, number one, stay with her, let alone marry her? Why put yourself to that misery? Unless... 
That's what you're used to, unless that is what you grew up in. That's why it's so important, guys, that uh, to understand how you were raised, your family situation is pretty much going to set the tone for how things go in your future family. So this is why I tell you to watch out for her family, what they're like. If they're a, a family with a lot of love and, and, and they resolve conflict in a mature and uh, healthy manner by talking about it and things like that, okay. And, and there's a lot of love going on and she has a good relationship with her brothers and sisters and her mom and dad, especially her dad, then, then the odds are more in your favor. But if there's all this drama and turmoil and screaming and fighting and all this other bullshit, that's going to be your life. That's going to be your family. Anyhow, <clears throat> she never took accountability for anything. Really, imagine that. Many months later, I learned the word gaslight and borderline personality narcissistic disorder, and she was that to a T. After we compromised to end the fight, she told me she was pregnant. Oh, shit. You're screwed. Well, she was screwed. To go back, she was always on the uh, Nuva ring and never told me she went off it. We did not have sexual relations often to my decision. Most men would think that she was an eight, but to me, her personality behavior made her a three. So I could not do the deed. Yeah, dude, I'm right there with you. I don't care how hot the girl is, how beautiful her face is, how amazing her body is. If she has a rotten personality, she could be willing to do anything I want. And I have a really warped mind in that area. It doesn't matter. I'm turned off. It's not going to happen. But again, why did you, why'd you marry her if she obviously was a three in terms of personality? <clears throat> obviously, this would make her even more pissed off. And once I told her flat out, I was not attracted to her because of her attitude. She could not handle that. And she said no man ever could resist her. I, flat, I flatly told her no. Flatly told her, well, I guess you just met one. Well, my friend, she's going to get that attention and validation someplace else to mark my words. She ain't getting it from you, if she isn't already. Fast forward, my daughter was nearly one year old. We had another typical blowout fight. He says, man, Russians just can't give up, and I threatened divorce several times. God, bro, why'd you put yourself through this shit? Talk about misery. He says, I suffer from depression and have been working with a well-renowned psychiatrist, and I'm, I, I am way on top of my game, but she forced me to stop taking my meds. How can she force you, the man, the man of the house, man of the relationship, a man, to stop taking your medications? It's your business. Let alone the fact that she's, let's be honest, an asshole. She even saw my doctor a few times and he and uh, said she was very ignorant, immature, and could not accept any form of constructive criticism. Well, that's how narcissists work. I took her to see it as this was my final straw to say whatever relationship there was, even though I knew it was dead. Right before my daughter's first birthday, I made the decision that would be best for my daughter that I divorce my wife while she was so young. While she was so young, that way she would only remember her loving parents in two different households. I picked up the papers from the court and I kept them in my drawer, well hidden. Good, good for you, bro. At least you're doing this relatively early on. You suffered enough. Imagine if you stayed with her. You think it would get better? Hell no, it would get worse. And your poor daughter would be in this household where you guys are fighting like cats and dogs 24-7. So good that you're willing to end this now and go through, rip the band-aid off fast, if you will, and, and then move on. Good, because a lot of guys would, would put up with this shit until the girl was 18 years old. We had another blowout fight. Noticing a lot, a lot of these. I know, so surprising. It was over my paycheck. She noticed that it was $100 less, and I told her I switched from a traditional 401k to a Roth 401k. I'm a financial advisor, so I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. I told her I never ask where her money goes, never ask for a dime. I pay all the bills. She rents her two homes that she's owned. I asked her the next morning if she had anything to say to me, and she said no. So I went to my drawer and told her, well, I got these divorce papers from the courthouse, and we can make this easy. Good for you. As I already came up with a nice settlement amount that she should have accepted but did not. So I had to hire a lawyer. Of course she's not going to accept your offer. There's no way in hell given that way you've described her and pretty much how things are nowadays, how she's going to accept your first offer. Now listen to some of the numbers, guys. He says here, 
For a two-year marriage, she wanted $190,000 plus the $30,000 engagement ring that she upgraded from an $8,000 ring only one year after our marriage that she never told me she did. She took, she took out all her wedding money to do it. Two years of marriage, and you got to fork over $190K, and she wants that giant ring. And she, your $8,000 ring you gave her wasn't good enough. So she had to take your wedding money and upgrade to a $30,000 rock on her finger. Unbelievable. You know how stupid that is. $30,000 for a stupid rock on your finger. You could take that $30,000 and put it in the S&P 500 and watch that fucker grow over the decades. Nope, going to put it on this stupid ring on my finger. Fast forward a month, it was my house and I was not going to leave, as I was told never to leave your own house. Well, unfortunately, bro, you're going to see that uh, that's not always the case. Big mistake. One day, she tried to flirt with me to have you know what with her, and of course, I did not want to, and I said no. I am positive she would have used this as marital grape. Speaking in code. About two hours later, we were arguing. She picked our up our daughter out of her high chair, looked at me in the eyes, smiled, and started screaming at the top of her lungs that I was hitting her. Oh my God, she's crazy. I immediately called the police and she denied all of this. Her plan was to go to my next door neighbor, who she was friends with, who was, all, who was also coaching her about the divorce from years ago. Luckily for me, that neighbor was not home and my ex-wife was stuck. So she was going to make a big noisy scene and the neighbor would hear this and be like, oh yes, he was doing all these awful things. I bet you now, looking back, we're wishing like hell that uh, you knew what red flags to look out for, huh? This is why I appreciate this guy sending this story. Fast forward again to about three months later. Since the first incident, I started tape recording her, thank God, and that came in handy in a fake domestic issue case that she brought against me. In the trial, she was so cocky and arrogant, but then it all fell apart for her. The police officer she subpoenaed was basically on my side, and the woman judge called called her route on not being credible and crying in the first session, then looking arrogant and like a movie star in the second part of the day. I won the case, and that was it. Unfortunately, I had to move out of my own house while still paying her bills, which I did for my daughter. I knew you were going to have to leave that house. That sucks. So let's, let's review. He offered her, she wanted 190k or whatever it was, 190k. The $30,000 engagement ring. He mentioned earlier she already owns two homes that she rents out. And now she's getting the house that they were in with a daughter. What a load of shit. For two years of marriage? Does this motivate many of you guys to uh, say I do? Put a ring on a girl's finger and potentially, because I want to emphasize potentially, deal with things like this? All your hard work, all the money you work to save and put away, poof, like that. No pair of tits is worth that. Think about that, guys. The divorce took longer than the amount of time I was married for. We went to mediation finally after COVID restrictions eased up. Ugh, nonsense. And unfortunately for her, she got even less than what I offered her, along with no alimony. Ha ha. Good. No alimony for her. Unfortunately, uh, that's a different ballgame with the assets, but at least enough to send her a check every month to her. But, of course, child support. Yeah, well, you got to take care of your daughter, dude. Unfortunately, a lot of times the situation is the, the guys pay out the money for child support. And, uh, unfortunately, the moms use that money to buy themselves a new handbag or something. I have my daughter as much as possible, but I will be going for more time when I can, which will be in 2023. Well, brother, I wish you luck. Because... Your daughter does not need to be around her mother. Her mother's a nut job and will no doubt do what she can to twist things around and turn the poor girl against you. You don't want your daughter to turn out like her. Unfortunately, she has never eased up. The sick part now is that she actually believes that my daughter has behavioral problems, which is completely untrue. Seriously, from people that have seen me with my daughter. I know that my daughter lashes out at her mother, but I think I know why. She is a control freak that actually got in trouble with the HR department and is as narcissistic as anyone I've ever known. And yet you married her. Don't mean to be uh, busting your balls here, dude, but I know you know this, but this is... Guys, I want you to learn from this story. 
Fast forward again, and we are in court soon regarding a matter that my daughter has behavioral problems, and the parenting schedule needs to change, which I strongly disagree with as a happy child with a well-established routine thrives. She wrote a 255-page motion regarding my mental stability. A 255-page talk about uh, determination and revenge. How this has anything to do with my daughter is beyond me, but the amount of hypocrisy in this motion is befuddling. And the amount of favors she asks of me afterwards really is mind-blowing. My lawyer gives her an A-plus in hypocrisy. My response was short to the point. I'm pretty sure she is incriminating herself by defaming my character and no reason only to get her own way. Judges have, the, have, read, have read right through her in the past, so I do not see why they won't in this case. Yeah, thank God that that judge you had before, the female judge, I might add, saw through her BS and you walked out of there, obviously, with more time with your daughter and not having to pay alimony. Could have had, could have been a completely different outcome. I learned, I learned to never combat a narcissist. You cannot argue with an irrational person with rational statements. Amen, brother. I ignore her as much as possible, and when she's trying to get under my skin, I say factual things and tell her to have a wonderful day. Sometimes it gets to the point where she is hackling and harassing me, and I calmly write to please stop harassing me and to enjoy her day. It's just like bullies when you're a kid. You know, when people are picking on you and giving you shit, if you give them a reaction, they're going to keep coming after you. But if you don't give them a reaction, if you don't make it fun for them to pick on you and give you shit, eventually they'll go away. Or in some cases, with boys especially, you got to kick their ass, then they'll leave you alone. But, you know, so if if she's constantly trying to push your buttons and get a reaction out of you, you can't give her one. Even though you pretty much would love to say and do many of things, which would be warranted, you can't. Now, this story is actually extremely summarized. The meticulous details will blow you away. My advice to men is never give an inch because she will take a mile and keep going. Absolutely, bro. She triples down even when she is wrong. That is no way to live. SSM and other channels have helped save my life. Thank you for your guidance because when I, when I divorced my ex-wife, I was kind of lost with the way she was attacking me. But I realized that this is female nature, but to the extreme because she was from Russia. And no, and uh, no, she was a citizen from a sham. And no, she was a citizen from a sham marriage way before me. Ah, you forgot to mention early on that she was married before you. Now I know where she got those two houses from. She's obviously a pro at this. And sadly, if you, if you said that she's an eight in looks department, she's going to find some other sucker. No offense. And then we'll get more assets out of that and probably have a kid with him as an insurance policy to get more shit. So, but anyhow, guys, that is what's going to go over. Just a warning of some of the potential misery you can go through if you and do get married. I'm not saying that it's going to be like this, but there's the possibility of this and how important it is to A, really spend, if you, if you are going to get married, years, I'm talking years with her to see what she's like, to learn everything about her, her family, her background, how she communicates, how she was with money, all sorts of stuff. And even go so far is if you're going to get married to live with her for a while to see what she's like living one-on-one. Because it's easy to put up an act when you're not living together. But once you're living together, then you can really see. And some can put up the act for a while. But the second that ring is on that finger and you walk down that aisle, it is Dr. Jekyll and Miss Bitch. So be careful. And also the importance of paying attention to red flags and knowing what red flags to look out for. This is why I encourage you guys to watch as many of my videos as I can, especially with these type of things about relationships and these personal stories that guys sent because it will help you. You'll get to the point, guys, that there'll be so many, you have learned so much that pretty much anything goes down, boom, like that. You're going to know, aha, that's a red flag. Out of here. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, as I said before, if you've got a great story you'd like to share with me, by all means, email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just be sure to really write it out well, paragraphs, good punctuation. I cannot do the ones where you jam everything together, one giant paragraph. And I mean, I had some that were literally the equivalent of like eight to 10 page stories all jammed together, no punctuation. You never knew what, where one sentence began and where it ended. I can't do those. I do not have time to sit through and organize it, make it easy for me to read. And if it's a good one, I'll definitely cover it down the road. But remember, I get so many of these all the time that sometimes it takes me weeks or months to get to them. 
but I will get to them if they definitely work. And this also goes for good articles. You find a really good article from around the world or here in the U.S. of A. That, that, that pertains to the stuff I talk about, email it to me, and I'll definitely cover it if it works. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.